Hey everyone, Barry Rager here. This is part one of a three-part series titled Steelhead Patterns. Now if you watch bass angling, at the beginning of the tournament you'll see the bass anglers rush out to their spots. They've got a bunch of different rods with a bunch of different baits tied on and they figure out which one works on that particular day. Well I do almost the same exact thing when I'm steelhead fishing. If you limit yourself to one particular type of bait, then you're really limiting your chances of hookups. Now I'm generally carrying two to three, sometimes even four rods, and I know that may seem overkill, but I don't want to keep re-rigging. And maybe by the end of the day I'll put a couple rods away, or at least maybe one rod away. But I always start out with jig fishing, and that's going to be part one of this series. In part two I'll cover bead fishing, and in part three I'll cover spinner fishing. But let's start with jig fishing. So one of my favorite rods I like to use that covers all different types of water conditions is this G Loomis E6X. It's an 1142 S spinning rod. It's nine and a half foot. It's rated six to 10 pound test. I've got it paired up with a Stratic 2500 reel. It's got 30 pound Power Pro on here. Now I say this is, this covers all different types of water conditions because you can fish it with very small jigs all the way up to like heavier stuff because you got your braided line. So the first thing you have to do is you have to tie a splice knot between your braid and your leader. So what I recommend is the Alberto knot. Now I've done my own testing. I've tried double unis against Alberto knots. In my experience, the Alberto knot is stronger. Super strong, super small, goes through the guides with ease. So the rivers that I still had fish, I'm generally targeting water that's about anywhere from three to six feet deep, let's say which means that I don't need to have leader length much longer than that. So I've cut off probably about seven to eight feet right here. When I'm using braid, I use this float, the Aero Float by Hawken. This is the AF7, it's his newest model. I believe he just sent out an email saying he just got more in stock, they're five bucks. So they come with these little brass weights and what those allow you to do is add weight to the float so that you can fish different weights of jigs. These AF7 floats, they come with these little rubber tubes. So you put those on your line first. So you put the orange tube on your line and put that on the top post. Now what's cool is these AF7s have a hole that goes through the body of the float. And in theory, that helps you from losing floats. So I'm gonna put that through the hole. Now I'm gonna put both of the brass weights on this part of the post. So they just slide on. Now, there's no retention on there, it's just the, the actual rubber band keeps them on there, so make sure when you put them on there, you gotta get that rubber band on there to hold them on. So the black rubber band goes on the bottom. So there you can see, I've got the bobber in line. So this end is up, obviously. So now we tie on our jig. Now in very clear water conditions, I might tie a little number 10 barrel swivel on here and then maybe two feet of fluorocarbon, which is more invisible under the water than is monofilament. So I'm gonna tie on my jig with a improved trialing knot. So now that I've shown you the rigging, let's go to the video and let's break that down and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. Now let's break this video down. Hit play. Notice the three rods. Jig, bead, and spinner rod. Nightmare, number 63, arrow jig. Right here I'm adjusting the depth of my jig. You want it at the fish's face height or slightly above. I'm casting the top of that run. Now watch, you're gonna see me put my arm up to keep that belly of line off of the water. Watch that bobber. Fish on, first cast. First cast. Now your drag should be set somewhat tight, but when you hit those fish, they can go wild. So you want to keep it just loose enough that you can pull some line out. So when those fish make those runs, they can do so freely. Oh, and 
native. It's a native. This fish is a native. It's you can tell because it has an adipose fin, which is behind the dorsal fin. Hatchery fish in Oregon, they clip the adipose off, so it's a heel fin clip. Gotta love these fights. Right underneath that ledge. Now keep in mind, I have to cut these videos down so people are interested in watching it. Some of these fights can last up to a half an hour. Since this is a native, you can see I have a net on my back. I'm going to try to hand line it just to eliminate even having to put it in my net. Come here. Just a beautiful native hand. I got you. I'm going to let you go. You can see right there it's a number 63 Nightmare Jake. Good. Hold on, man. I'm going to get that out. And there she goes. And you're gone. Beauty. That's the way it should go. Beautiful fish. So that was first cast with a 63 arrow jig. What I have rolling today, I have an AF7. This is one of the old Aeroflow AF7s. Because the water is so clear today, I have a little tiny barrel swivel and I have about two foot of fluorocarbon 10 pound liter to that first cast. If you liked the video, make sure to hit subscribe, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss the next two parts. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment field. I get back to everyone. And if I earned it, hit the like button. So I'll see you on part two.